from St. Paul, Minnesota, the XL Energy Center, we welcome you to the tourney on the fan presented by Hepner's Auto Body and Glass with Danny Ryan. I'm Zach Calverson. Live audio of this four versus five late night battle between the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks and the White Bear Lake Bears all coming up here. Sink your TV, put it on your phone, listen, however you want to listen. We're happy you are joining us here. We also will have the chat as well. Feel free to join in on that and uh, provide your comments, etc. It's a little interactive, fun broadcast, making the best of it. Uh, such a busy night in sports here, so just happy to be able to bring this broadcast to you in some way, shape, or form. Now, Danny, uh, the Thunderhawks, the Bears, four versus five. Usually, this game is a, a nice little treat at the end of a, a busy day in uh, Minnesota high school hockey, and uh, this is no exception. This is uh, is set up to be a, a very excellent ice hockey game. We've watched some lopsided quarterfinals, having just witnessed one as well. This one will not be that. It should be a very close game, and both schools are showing up. Looks like White Bear Lake is in the all-whites, and Grand Rapids is in their orange. Yeah, the battle of, of the orange here, of course, the Bears, and first time in many years, actually a top four seed, so yeah. they will have the last change that will be wearing white, and they will um, have a little bit of pressure on them, too, for a change as well, because uh, going into this one, obviously, it, it's more of a coin flip, but whenever you uh, play a team in the regular season, then meet them again in the postseason, there's... A little added pressure for the team that won. Yep. It's always hard to beat a team twice. White Bear Lake went up to Grand Rapids and won 2 nothing in part because, well, Leo Gabriel, your goaltender, stood on his head. They were out yep. shot almost by a ratio of 2-1. to one. But uh, Grand Rapids controlled the flow, uh, was uh, played very, very well, just couldn't solve the White Bear Lake goaltender. No, and, and Leo Gabriel stood on his head in the – Hill Murray section final as well. I expect him to do the same. He is a junior. He is on the watch list for the Frank Brisbane Award next season, going to the top senior goaltender in the state. He is a player to watch um, for White Bear. On the flip side, the other goalie would be Carter Casey, the sophomore netminder who brought his team to the Bantam AA State Tournament last year through some upsets. Expect him to make some really good saves as well. Yeah, the goaltending matchup uh, will be uh, just great to watch on its own. Uh, scoring will, as we saw in that first meeting between these teams, will come at a premium. A 2 nothing final there as uh, the Thunderhawks, I'm sure, as they get closer and closer to this one, probably ready to go, ready for an opportunity at the Bears again to, to not only um, perhaps win this game, but at least just get that first goal uh, against the Bears this season. Yeah, and I, th I think that's uh, what Grand Rapids wants to do. They want to come out hot, and they want to get something gritty right away. I ran into Coach Clafton last, uh, yesterday afternoon, and he seemed pretty confident about this one. As we look, uh, looks like Grand Rapids brought the cheerleaders, which is a uh, Always a fun sight for high school hockey when you have skating cheerleaders. Certainly an old school look. Now the Thunderhawks, Danny, coming into this one through section seven and uh, a, a heck of a, 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 the fact that the, they go through this, uh, that tough section every year, they got to play teams like Andover and uh, Duluth East, et cetera. It was a little down this year, which is why as yep. a top seed, the only top seed uh, in this tournament, uh, in the sections at least, to, to get here, then they're, they're number five. Yep. Um, but still, uh, there's really no easy section final out there to win, and uh, that, that was no exception there. I, I, and I actually think that Grand Rapids likes to be in this game. When they won state, they were in this game, and so they, they feel confident about it. But like you said, they were the number one seed in their section, had to beat Andover in double overtime just to get here. Um, so they, they still have a lot to prove. In White Bear Lake, we were there last year, Danny. It was or last week, I should say, yep. and uh, in one of the more bizarre games that we have ever seen, a three-nothing final it was basically one-nothing. Yep. And uh, 
for White Bear Lake to get past a team like Hill Murray, who had a great season and, and had a, and particularly were, were, were trending upwards. Um, that's, a, that's a tough team to beat, and it showed that um, this this is a, a very uh, good White Bear Lake team to fear. Well, anytime you can beat Hill Murray in your White Bear Lake, that's always a huge accomplishment. And they were 1-0-1 on them on the year, and really hats off to White Bear Lake. They won their section. And what I mean by that, they beat Hill convincingly, and they beat Stillwater convincingly this sure. year. And that's a huge way to come into the state tournament. Uh, a lot of eyes will be on number nine for White Bear Lake and Nolan Road. Uh, just an incredible season. A Mr. Hockey finalist, 33 goals, 24 assists. What uh, do you make of his game? He was on my ballot for Mr. Hockey this year. I think I had him around number five or number four. Uh, every time I watch Nolan play, he just makes the simple, the hard things look easy. He just simplifies the game. The, and whenever the puck's on his stick, it's electric. He's got, uh, like you said, Zach, 33 goals. And the next person on White Bear Lakes is, is not even close. I don't even think there's a person with double-digit goals. There would be if, if. Jack Stanius uh, did not get injured in the early part of the season. He uh, had an upper body injury, uh, was out for much of the year, but then come, ha, uh, came back late in the year. And this has been a completely different hockey team since he returned. Yep. And uh, a roller coaster season for sure for the Bears. And they hope that they, uh, with the help of Jack and with the help of Nolan and uh, Leo Gabriel as well, their goaltender, they hope that this is uh, trending upwards here. And will hopefully, uh, of course, we got to bring it up in this Class 2A quarterfinal game, uh, Danny. The White Bear Lake Bears, we'll, we'll, we'll mention the White Bear Mariner Dolphins. The Dolphins back in 82, they won the quarterfinal, they won the semifinal, lost to Edina in the in the championship game. But as far as the White Bear Lake Bears go, 19 appearances, including the first tournament, first game of the first state tournament ever back in 1945. The Bears have lost all 19 appearances. And it's just every single time now they make their way to the X, people wonder, is this going to be the year they finally break the curse? And it looks like White Bear brought five student sections. So the student section is feeling it right now, too. And, I mean, I'll be a, a little biased here, but yeah. White Bear always brings the, 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 the students. Oh, uh, They do. They okay, do. It's some of the okay. largest. And you can admit a little yes, bit. That yes, they, White Bear notable. brings the crowd. It have, you know, it's probably partially because it only happens once every five years. But, hey, they, there we go. It, it still counts, right? There we go. It still counts. <laughs> uh, yeah, to the, we see some Thunderhawks fans in this chat here. And uh, just uh, a heads up. Um, <laughs> if you want... Unbiased, bias. I, I know you're not supposed to do this, but I'm not going to give the actual link. I'm, I don't want to make my bosses angry, but <laughs> Sheldon's to my right, and you should know all. You should all know Sheldon. And if you don't know Sheldon, well, you deserve to listen to this broadcast today. All right. So let's just uh, let's get through this. Let's have some fun. Hopefully, not a nervous breakdown, and <laughs> and uh, and and really just see a, a really good high school hockey game because I know obviously you're an impartial observer here and I, I I know that most people who are impartial observers are just excited to see yeah. what happens when these two teams meet again. Exactly and uh, you know anybody around the state always loves when a northern school comes down and that's what we're seeing with Grand Rapids and it's cool their goaltenders their backups are all psyched up too they got neck tolls on and they show Grant Clafton another storyline this is Grant Clafton's first year at Grand Rapids he was the Greenway head coach several years ago who brought that team to state. And to his left right now is his assistant coach, Wade Chido, who was the head coach previous. White Bear Lake Bears getting announced right now. <laughs> Love hearing what they uh, say. Will Distad, another player to watch out for tonight. Really good on that White Bear Lake blue line. Going to Mankato. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow, a prop. Whoa. A prom a prom pulls it. Jack Stanius getting announced. He's, uh, and of course, Nolan Rowe, a little extra. A little uh, ex, extra cheer there. 
with some ice there. What too. do you think of the peroxide here? I love the peroxide. And uh, well done by my mom. <laughs> yeah, Jack Stanius was in for an interview um, on Sunday, and he was really happy about it. Drop your mom's salon, too. I love it. Props to my mom. Uh, and, 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 <laughs> and Tanner Olson's mom, too, I guess. Too. I, I guess, yes. Just silence from Timmons. Just high stairs. Blake Eckerly, uh, he has been hot as of late. He That's had a true. phenomenal sectional tournament. He's going to Utah for baseball. And uh, his coach, said, oh, I love that, <laughs> Nate Selsky. <laughs> With bringing the, up the uh, glasses. With some tape on the glasses, too. And Tyler Lalon, number 40. <laughs> Did he say me so so that? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Brandon Wallen, he played here in 2011, lost to the Duluth East Greyhounds, and JoJo Janetta, 3 to 2 in overtime. Chris Anderson, longtime assistant, taking over for longtime head coach Tim Sager in his first year. So, Danny, two first year head coaches, uh, at least with their teams. And alma maters. And too, alma maters. Which well. is really fun. Really cool. Oh, I'm excited for this one, Zach. Here we go. White Bear Lake will be in their white jerseys with orange and black trim. And I guess this is pretty easy, Danny. Orange jerseys for uh, Grand Rapids with white and black trim. Colors are similar. These two teams uh, meet every single year, whether Grand Rapids comes down 35 or the Bears go back up there. It's uh, a storied, uh, couple of storied programs. Would it be 169? How do you get to Grand Rapids? 35 off of to like Cloquet McGregor. Or, uh, you, got, you got the Moose Lake and you go. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Everything's 35 in White Bear, man. You either go south or north, it's all 35. If you go east, you might hit 694. I don't know. Bottom line is, <laughs> we're here. We're going to have some fun. The both teams went down 35 to get here. That's true. That's true. Oh. Carter Casey in goal for the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks. Danny, 2.35 goals against, averaging around 92% save percentage. Like I said, he brought this team one to state this year, and he brought the Bantam Double A's to state last year on an upset. They're riding his hot hand. Nine. Let's be exact here, by the way, Casey. 915 save percentage. Yes. And we'll be exact because we go to the other side and uh, career save percentage for Leo Gabriel, also 915. He's 9-2-4 on the season, 1.87 goals against. So let's uh, let's do this. A couple of really good goaltenders, a couple of really good coaches. Shout out to Jason listening in the Puerto Rico, Tony, oh, Mike, all sorts of people listening all over the world. Appreciate you for tuning in. Let's go. Let's go. White Bear Lake Grand Rapids, the final. Quarterfinal of the day in the Class 2A tournament is underway, and the Bears off the draw, playing it through center. Eckerly gains the line. He'll get to the blue line, is stopped up there, and the battle just in front of the penalty box area continues there before the Thunderhawks steal it out. It's roll off. He'll work it to the far wall. Thunderhawks gain through center. They drive in, left wing side, off the back wall, takes a Good angle hop for the Thunderhawks. Some nice moves here by Roloff as he drives deep in the corner. Thunderhawks continuing the battle behind, and then they'll play it out in front. Chance shot Ooh. and a save made by Leo Gabriel off the blocker. Goes to the corner. Great first 45 seconds or so for the Thunderhawks. Another chance, a save made again by Gabriel. The rebound was there just out of the reach of the Thunderhawk there on the side. And it's cleared out to center, out of danger as the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks coming out of the gates flying. Yeah, and he's, uh, you can see that Grand Rapids is trying to go inside right now on Gabriel. Gabriel was only tested really from the outside in the section final. And that's a key game plan for Rapids going forward. 
Bears breaking it out of their zone up the right side. It's pushed in by Butel, right corner. Race for the puck is on. Shimon tries to clear for the Thunderhawks. He does so. Distad picks it up at center ice, knocks it off the near side wall, and then across into the White Bear Lake zone. The Thunderhawks come once again. A shot. It's a body dangerous bouncing puck in front. Timmons will scoop it up for White Bear Lake. He gains a line, cuts it on the right side, try to go to Distad to his left. Instead, it's forced to the corner. The long reach of Maverick Timmons, six foot two, 180, using his physical size to his advantage as the puck is cleared out to center. Distad from 100 feet will dump it in. Thunderhawks trying to take advantage of a White Bear Lake change. They have a quick transition, but the shot carries high and wide of Leo Gabriel. Far wall, there's jam it out to center. Very traditional like feeling out process here, Danny, and perhaps a little advantage to Grand Rapids early, but now the team's settling down just a bit. Yeah, Grand Rapids' strong points are its goaltending in D, so we'll see how Bauer, Murphy, and Luca Roloff kind of match up against these great forwards that White Bear Lake has. At the red line, Thunderhawks will actually end up kicking it in. He lost his stick. That was Kyler Miller, so he'll retrieve his piece of composite and while that goes on battle right between the two player benches puck comes free the Thunderhawks have it through center ice into the zone offside 1358 to go in the first it's still scoreless between the Thunderhawks and the Bears offsides have been kind of a key throughout this whole day it seems like we've had a couple of goals get called back because of offside so they're really watching that Got to be careful. The cameras are rolling. And we, as you mentioned, Danny, the the reviews kind of change a lot of that here. Well, completely right now. Bears dump the puck deep into the Grand Rapids zone. Thunderhawks break it out immediately, but Laska meets him at the blue line, steals it away, and returns it to his D. Tanner Olsen slides it forward. Now up to Stanius. He'll come in on the right side, fires a shot, and a right pad save made as it's played back out to neutral ice. Carter Casey getting his first real test of the hockey game. Passes it with flying colors as he will come out of his goal. Stops it behind his goal. The Thunderhawks rotate it out. They'll send it down the ice and we'll have our first icing of the game. 13 minutes, 15 seconds to go in period one. Still shots two to one in favor of Rapids. Like you're saying, Zach, it's a real feeling out. We see that most of the time in these four or fives. The first period or so is a feeling out, and then it kind of starts to settle in and see who can start to break in. Face off to the left of Casey. It's won by the Bears. Back to the blue line. A shot. Selsky takes a hop off a of body. Goes to the corner. Battle for the puck along the side of the cage now, and it's grabbed by Duel. He'll slide it to his left up off a couple of skates and then duel continuing through center duel moving in on his backhand lost it puck played to the blue line a shot score <laughs> william shermon first blood for the thunderhawks at the 404 mark and it's one nothing grand rapids will shermon from the blue line again most of the offense for Grand Rapids will start at the blue line, and this one was a snipe from the blue. It doesn't look like it tipped through anybody, but we'll see the replay again. Started with a great rush by Rapids. Puck fluttered out, and then just really stepped into that shot. Will Shermon might be a tip. We'll have to see. Looks like Kyle, Kyler Miller might have tipped it, but TBD who they'll credit it to. So they will we'll get the official call in a moment. Swing for Grand Rapids, his sixth goal of the season, number five, William Shermon. First assist to number 24, Jameson Duell. And number 21, Kyler Miller. Time of that goal was 4:04. A huge goal for the Thunderhawks early. We mentioned, Danny, that goals are going to come at a premium. We'll see how the Bears respond here as they work the puck into the zone. Timmons at the half wall, lost it. 
Thunderhawks come back. It's Gunderson driving it in deep. Gabriel leaves it back. It'll be Zach Bay, another one of the injured White Bear Lake Bears that had a season shortened a bit. Here's Buto now into the zone. Backhander for Timmons in the left corner. He's driven hard off the puck by Murphy for the Thunderhawks. Murphy looking for options here as he has some open ice to skate forward with. Sends it off the glass to center. And here comes Grand Rapids once again. Right wing side, it's Seth Carlson. He's hit hard there. Timmons steals the puck away. Sends it off the wall for Buto, who one hands it into the Grand Rapids end before making his way to the bench for a line change. Other way, here's Garski for Grand Rapids into the White Bear Lake zone. Sends it to the left of Leo Gabriel. Bears looking to break it out here. Tanner Olsen gives it over for Bay. Now it's Norman with it for White Bear. He'll flip it to the blue line. A shot from the blue line blocked, and the Bears will go back into the left corner to pick it up. It's Tanner Olsen. He's ridden off the puck. Gets it forward for Villela. Villela got it to the red line, and then... Lost it as he crossed the red line. Bears in support, however, it's Norman who will slide it to his right, and it's dumped in deep by Newlander. Behind the Grand Rapids goal, the Thunderhawks clear it down the ice. This will go softly on the White Bear Lake goal. Leo Gabriel paddling it over for Will Distad. He'll slide it to Eckerly. Eckerly cuts from right to left, lost it. Here come the Thunderhawks, chance on the backhand, but unable to get a much on it was Gunderson. Takes a big hit, paid for it there. As Stanias controls for White Bear Lake, flips it up to center. And at center ice, it's grabbed by Carpenter for Th the Thunderhawks. A shot taken now by Shermone. That's turned away by Gabriel. Corner to corner now. Thunderhawks, another try, another shot. And it ramps off of Gabriel's stick, goes to the far corner. Bears take over. Nolan Road up the ice now. Cuts from left to right, has some speed. He's dangerous. Nolan Road with the shot, it's a shin pad. Bounces to the corner for Laska. Laska at the half wall, trying to keep it in front of him. He does so. Fights off two Thunderhawks. Now a third, still with it as Laska as he goes to the far corner. Back to the blue line here. Taken and fired toward the goal, but blocked en route. Goes to the corner instead. Hits a stick, and it's picked up by Nolan Road. He's swarmed by a couple of Thunderhawks, and Grand Rapids comes away with the puck as they gain the line, and they will fire it in deep for it to be stopped behind the goal by Leo Gabriel. Blake Eckerly behind that White Bear Lake cage with 9.43 to go in period number one. one nothing Thunderhawks here early as it's Nolan Road once again crossing the blue line, goes to Laska. Laska winds, fires a pass across that's blocked. He'll get it right back. Eckerly slides it forward, tipped, directed on goal by Road, but played out of harm's way by Grand Rapids as they work the puck up the right wing side. It's Garski to his left. Chance shot wide of the White Bear Lake cage, picked up by Tanner Olsen and played over to the corner. Bodies collide there. Bears come away with the puck. It's played from left to right through neutral ice. Maverick Timmons into the zone now. Puts on the brakes. Goes back to the blue line with it. Connects with Buto. Buto along in the blue line in front of the Grand Rapids bench. The Thunderhawks wrestle it free and then they'll work their way through neutral just inside the White Bear line. But they are met by Will Distad. He goes circle to circle to his right. Eckerly's pass does not connect. Goes for an icing and we will have a break in the action with eight minutes and 50 seconds to go. Shots on goal, seven to one. Goals, one to nothing in favor of Grand Rapids. You notice that Rapids is setting up in a one, two, two? A little bit. So they clearly watched the Hill-Murray film. Hill did that and that gave Rapids fits in the section final and really kept um, White Bear at bay and now Grand Rapids is doing that with a lead, too, where Hill never had that opportunity either. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. And it looks like White Bear is you know, willing to set up in the trap. Oh, so I didn't see how they can find a short pass. I did talk to Stanius on Sunday, and I was talking to him about the 1-2-2, two, two, and he was, I was like, why not skate through it? Skate through it. And he, he agreed. You know, like, that was... The th what their D didn't do on, in the section final, and uh, I'll be surprised if uh, it, it happens that way again. It's crazy, uh, Dan, we, we talked about in the pregame how the Thunderhawks were just, not only obviously wanting to win, but wanting to just get that first goal 
get that monkey off their back a little bit here. And that's exactly what they did just over four minutes in. They went 51 minutes at their home rink without yeah. a goal. It took them just over four to solve Leo Gabriel. And from a mental standpoint, uh, that's that's it's big, a, a huge, huge yeah, goal. Huge, especially when you're, you know, let's say wearing the darker colored jersey. Right. I, I, I really think it's big to get the first goal. And, you know, it didn't matter for Creighton today. Creighton came back after a three-goal deficit, and they were the, uh, you know, unseeded opponent versus Centennial. So we have seen it already today, but it's big when you can get the first goal. 8.50 on the clock in this opening period. Grand Rapids 1, White Bear Lake 0. Faceoff will be to the right of Leo Gabriel in the White Bear Lake zone, and it's won by the Bears. Selsky high off the glass to the blue line, but kept in nicely by Gavin Forrest. He'll drive it down low behind the White Bear Lake goal. Selsky backhands it this time forward to Stanius. Now to Road. Road looking after it here. He'll carry it into the Grand Rapids zone, but they say Stanius was about a half a foot too far in front of him, and he jumped offside that. is the call. Ugh. This top line for the Bears, which again, if you look at the point total, you like, it's not. Uh, it's not Gaudi. Not Gaudi, but that's in part because the lines have had to sh be shuffled so much because of injuries. So it's a deceiving uh, roster stat sheet, I will tell you that much. Back, or Selsky Ooh. from the blue line takes a shot that is redirected wide of the goal. Squirts out in front again, but the Thunderhawks are there to play it out of harm's way. In fact, they'll carry it in now. And a shot from the right side. Glove by Gabriel. He'll hang on. 8.09 left. So shoving behind the White Bear Lake cage after the whistle. Yeah, Nathan Garski with the shot, but it was really kind of a simple shot. Well, it looks like they fixed the Mr. Hockey. Yes, they did. I, <laughs> Did you see that tweet earlier that, like, none of them were correct? Go golfers, woo, for Nolan Road. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny to see a road committed to yes. the gophers. All right. Of course, uh, Leighton doing a great job. His older brother up at Bemidji State. Beavers having a great season. It was a great weekend for the Road family. Here's a chance for the Thunderhawks. Dangerous, <laughs> but Bears played away, and now opportunity for a breakaway here. Stanius with the shot, and it's gloved and covered and held on to by Carter Casey. Stanius looking for a uh, perhaps a, a rebound or something there, Danny. Just didn't find a great play by Casey dropping that glove down and hanging on. He's such a dangerous player to match up against. His speed is so incredible. And, and, you know, he's just got an engine that doesn't quit. And I, the, the other hard part is you haven't watched a lot of film on him because there isn't a lot of film on him this year. Not at all. That junior, sort of the hair apparent at this point to Nolan Road, who will uh, depart for whatever it will be. St. Cloud State, very excited to have him in the future. But Tri-City for the time being. For real. Dylan Buteau for White Bear Lake, forcing it through neutral ice just inside the Grand Rapids zone before the Thunderhawks send it right back down the ice. And then they'll have just enough for an icing. 7.20 to go in this opening frame. one nothing Grand Rapids. Still some good push, but shots are in favor of Rapids 8-2 now. There's some glimpses of White Bear's offense. We saw that Nolan Road breakaway. We saw... The Stanius one recently. Let's get some offensive zone control and start to set up something and see what that can do. Draw to the right of Casey, won by the Bears, kicked forward by Noah Driscoll behind the Grand Rapids, go to the far corner. Stepping up there is Evan Newlander for White Bear Lake. He's driven off the puck, but it comes free. Nearly went out in front of the Thunderhawks goal and said it's forced back to the outside by Grand Rapids. Pinned up against the wall, but fighting through it as Villela goes to the blue line. A shot is blocked. Grand Rapids clears it out. And Luca Roloff helping his Thunderhawks keep it out of danger for a moment. But now the Bears back the other way. A shot from the right circle. Turned away. Casey covers up. And you can tell, Danny, these teams don't like each other too much. 
Well, there's going to be a little bit of animosity, especially when, you know, there's a Friday at the state tournament berth on the line. And guarantee that White Bear Lake kids know how big historically a win would be here tonight. Another face off this time on the left of Casey, won by the Bears. Right chance shot, tipped out in front. Now the back to Distad at the blue line, down low, just out of the reach of Stanius as it goes all the way around the zone of the far side for the Thunderhawks to break out. They'll gain the line, they'll dump it in. Will Distad behind his goal. We'll work a breakout pass to the blue line, but it's kept in, fired wide of the goal. Dangerous chance out in front, but carried away by Nolan Road forward to Stanius. Stanius using a screen there, fires a quick wrister that's gloved by Casey and held on. And Casey's doing a really good job with rebounds controls right now. That's super important in this rink that has bouncy boards. The ice is a little bit faster. The lighting is different. The more rebound control that you can have is the better. Casey looks to his right this time. Draw one back to Olsen for White Bear Lake. To the point to Eckerly. Eckerly fires one. Bouncing puck in front. Bears can't get a handle on it. Now it's Eckerly stepping up again. He'll drop it down low. Laska looking after it now. Road back to the blue line for Olsen. Olsen tiptoes along that blue line. Forward to Road. Or make that Stanius. He'll send it through the slot. Eckerly steps up at the half wall. He'll play it to the corner. It's taken away by Luka Roloff. And the breakout successful for the Thunderhawks. Trying to get some odd man numbers going there, but Olsen steps up and pushes it forward before the Thunderhawks carry it in. Chance in front, shot save, rebound by Gabriel. Juicy right out in front, but yep. the Thunderhawks couldn't put away. Another try, another shot, and another miss there for Grand Rapids. Went high and wide, bounces off the corner ball, wards, and goes back out to neutralize before Thunder, the Thunderhawks carry it back in. Right to left, left circle. Spinning around, it's Miller. Goes down low, gets it back. Pinned up against the wall by Olsen. Grand Rapids comes away with the puck. They go to the blue line, a shot trying for a tip. In the way of that one was Rode. And it's played forward to Lalonde, and he'll gain the line, and he'll dump it in behind the Thunderhawk goal. Casey with a quick shot back out to center. Distad. We'll handle it for White Bear. Selsky backhands it along for the lawn and at the White Bear Lake bench. A little dangerous play there with the line change happening, but they figure it out. No penalty needed here as Buto skates it in now to the Grand Rapids zone. Back to the blue line. It's a shot save made there by Casey. Good look there for Distad as it found its way through. Buto now trying for options here, spins and fires a shot that's blocked, gets it back on the corner. Digging hard now behind the Grand Rapids goal, flips up in the air, falls down in the far corner, and the Thunderhawks look to break it out, and they do so. They got it to the red line, it's fired deep, back to pick up will be Distad. He'll work it to the outside, puts on the brakes and slow things down here, and the Bears will set up a play, 3.54 to go in the first period, one nothing Grand Rapids as Noah Norman Cuts through neutral ice, goes in on the left side of the poke off his stick. Bears keep the play going. Here's Norman in the corner, fires a shot. Ooh. Save is made. Nobody there to put away an absolutely beautiful rebound, but that puck will be cleared out by the Thunderhawks, and the Bears will come back and they'll regroup in their zone. It's taken forward by Olsen. Coast to coast action for him as he fires a shot that hits the netting and ricochets back out. Some hitting after the whistle again, and we'll. Have a media timeout with three and a half to go in the first period. It's one nothing Grand Rapids. The Bears clawing their way back, so to speak. Rebound getting some opportunities. Rebound control. Rebound yes. control, I think, is going to be the secret in this game. Who, who, whether Gabriel or Casey can control theirs. Because, uh, like, we've seen I, ever since a tournament I remember, even if we look back to the JoJo Genetic Kyle Rao goal, Okay, rebound control is important, and whoever can kind of keep those at bay, I think wins the game here. And, and that last one, right in front of um, 
Carter Casey there. Nobody was home for White Bear Lake. I really think you got to be watching for every shot and collapsing is like going into the paint. You know what I mean? Just getting into the dirty areas. How are you doing? We're getting there. <laughs> Trying to balance the old, uh, you know, Ying and Ying. professional side of the thing. And I get it. Trying to I get it. deliver a, a somewhat coherent broadcast with. I'm falling. But you. there's nothing, you know. It's 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 funny. The same thing happened last week. There's nothing I can do here. No. Uh, there's nothing you can do as a fan. You're just hoping that uh, you just have to sit back and watch it. it. It's going to un unfold whether you like it or not. Shout out to uh, everybody watching here in the chat as well. There's How's the chat doing? Doing pretty well. Some names that I'm, I don't really know if I want to say in high school broadcast. <laughs> Ketchup and mustard, the juice very much. That's is good. Lucy. <laughs> Poofka. All right, 325 on the clock. Shots are now back even, nine to eight. White Bear has crawled back into that category. Showing highlights, I still cannot believe that was a three nothing final. That will that was, be one of the more bizarre hockey games you'll ever see. Uh, it was just weird. Gabriel earning that shutout. He will not get one here tonight. But maybe that's okay. Face off in the Grand Rapids on the left of goaltender Carter Casey, won by the Bears. Olsen, one time shot goes high and wide of the Goal picked up behind the net by Laska to the corner. Two on two battle in said corner. The Thunderhawks able to break it out. They go off the wall to just inside the White Bear Lake zone where Olsen will retrieve it. Goes off the wall back to himself. He's in a little bit of trouble here and it's poked away. Here come the Thunderhawks. Chance shot wide Ooh. of the goal. Takes a weird hop off the wall and then off the side of the cage. Eckerly. Comes back in support as well, but the Thunderhawks playing very, very well in that White Bear Lake zone as Garski goes to the blue line. Across for Roloff, who spins around and backhands one down low. Olsen behind that goal, goes off the side of the cage to himself, and then skates it forward here through center ice and into the Grand Rapids side. Two and a half to go in the opening frame. Thunderhawks break it out immediately. They send it down the ice. Well, Distad will pick it up. Timmons directs it in, and Casey will stop it behind his goal to be picked up by Bauer Murphy. Here come the Thunderhawks. Right wing side with speed, a shot. Save made by Gabriel as he directed the puck to his right corner. Distad playing it forward in the direction of Timmons. He's hit, separated from the puck. Duel for... The Thunderhawks sends it down low, stolen away by the other 24 on the ice, and Nate Selsky. Duell gets it right back at the half wall. Takes a couple of hits in the process. Back to the blue line. Shermone, the lone goal scorer, fires a shot. That is directed aside once again. And Timmons, using that long reach, picks it up. And hit the Bears will skate it up the ice three on three, entering the Thunderhawks zone. On the exchange, Timmons lost it. Bears... Do recover, they'll regroup here at neutral ice. Eckerly to his right, now back to the left for Buto, and now to Timmons, Timmons top of the circle. Nice moves for Maverick Timmons as he goes off the wall. Around for Buto, knocked away from him. Raced after here, picked up by the Thunderhawks. They lost it though at the blue line and- Should not, have been. Yeah, Timmons, I'll just hold my comments here. That was a penalty, that, that was a trip. Yep, yeah. so Thunderhawks, uh, we remain five on five. As Grand Rapids will gain the line and fire it deep off the stick of Caleb Gunderson. Tanner Olsen for White Bear Lake crosses his own blue line. 47 seconds to go. Still with it as Olsen fires a shot, hits a Thunderhawk, goes up high and into the netting. So should have a face off coming up in the Grand Rapids zone with 43.2 seconds to go in a penalty less first period. That should have been called though. That, that was a clear trip, right? The, on, and it kind of ruined us. The, I would say it took away a scoring opportunity in a way. 
Draw one back to Eckerly for White Bear Lake. Hard off the wall down low for Rode. And then a pass out in front goes back to Diskett, who fires one wide of the Grand Rapids goal. Stanius at the half wall. Down low for Rode. Rode works it back to the outside. Looks for options here. Still with it is Rode. A little miscommunication with Will Distad forces the Bears to come back out with 20 seconds remaining in period number one. Eckerly flips it up in the air into the Grand Rapids zone. It falls. It'll be grabbed by Murphy. Murphy across the ice here forward to Garski. Garski with eight seconds to go. Fires a shot. Save made by Gabriel. Rebound pushed wide of the goal. It'll be grabbed by Carlson back to the blue line. Time ticking away. A buzzer beater not there for Grand Rapids as the first 17 minutes is gone. The Thunderhawks lead White Bear Lake one to nothing after one. Good period for Grand Rapids, and I would say White Bear recovered after the early goal. Yeah. They they at least established themselves offensively, I felt, and didn't, I don't, it's hard to say. They had a good period, but they didn't have a lot of grade A opportunities yet. Yeah, it's uh, it definitely felt like uh, the Thunderhawks were the more ready team right off the bat, and they came. They did exactly what they needed to do. They needed to come out of the gates flying, and, and just go for first blood like they've never gone for first blood yeah. before. Yeah. Because they, everybody in this building knows how good Leo Gabriel is. Yep. And how good the decor is for Rapids. So like, if they can draw first blood, and then lay back in a shutdown mode, that benefits them. Now the pressure is extended to the goal scorers for White Bear Lake. Uh, Nolan Rowe, Jack Stanius. Uh, I mean, even I would look at the second line as well. Yeah, they Timmons. need to come up with something here um, because uh, they did have what eight shots, but I don't know how many Grade A plus scoring chances they had there. Yeah, and I. Uh, this is Carter Casey's first trip to the X. So capitalize on that opportunity. Look for those plays. He's a sophomore. And look for the opportunities that he gives you. And uh, what a test now for first-year head coach Chris Anderson for White Bear Lake. How do you go to the locker yeah, what room do and what say? do you say? What do you say? And then on the other on the We've other been side, here before, Bears. Exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, and I tell you, it's just been a crazy day of hockey because you know, yeah. obviously the the two one two top seeds uh, advancing, but we saw earlier the uh, Raiders erased a three goal lead, and we mentioned earlier on today, you know, this afternoon during that that game between the Cougars and the the Raiders, what you know, what are these guys who are playing the evening thinking about that? Yeah, and that has to be in the back of both these teams' mind. On rapid side, it's there's obviously no. Uh, safe lead at the state tournament. No. It's got to provide some encouragement for the Bears, but uh, for a team that uh, had a lot of uh, many high hopes here for as White Bear Lake, it's, it's uh, going to be a tough 34 minutes ahead. We didn't see a lot of offense in the section final. No. I haven't seen a lot of offense today yet, and that that's a concerning point for White Bear. It, it very much is, and, and I, you know, thinking back to you know, as this, you know, this team had, did put up six goals against a very good Stillwater Pony squad yep. um, in the section semifinal. It's it's a question of, and that was that was encouraging because there were multiple different goal scorers across multiple lines. They had played and Eckerly you split was, the season matchups right. too, and it, it I, was, I was at one of them. Yes. I was at the Stillwater one, and at points of that game, Stillwater was the better team too. Mm -hmm. So to win in that fashion. Right. Is impressive. So that that's the question is what happened to all that scoring. Um, and I, it, it makes sense against a, a team like Hill that's playing that 1-2-2. Two, two, but uh, for the Thunderhawks, um, I don't know, maybe it's just state tournament jitters and, and we'll see what happens. But uh, Bears fans wondering where all that is. So Completely um, agree. Absolutely. We um, eventually might be back on the radio, which would be cool. Oh, so if uh, you don't on, say, depending on how the goal for women uh, team, yeah, does, we should but, probably check up on that. And uh, yeah, so that'll be fun. And uh, and then we'll be back on the radio for sure tomorrow uh, for more games on the plus FM ninety six point seven. So if you're uh, listening tonight, you're gonna go back to work tomorrow 
uh, morning. Be sure to, uh, as you're driving around that day, driving home from work, whatever it is, uh, tune on, turn on FM 96.7. We will have uh, those games for you there. We will also uh, have the evening games on the Plus tomorrow night. Uh, the winner of this one, of course, will yep. go on to play Edina Hornets. Good luck to whoever has to move, play Edina Hornets all the way even to the end. That was a a, a great job uh, by Kurt Giles and company from top to bottom. And then, of course, Chan Hassan and Creighton Durham Hall, which is uh, intriguing just because you have uh, the, Th the Raiders have some have some experience, and, and it, it seemed like they used that to their advantage um, in that they didn't panic. They just it really they felt stuck, that way. They trusted the process. Yeah, down three nothing, and just fought their way back and keep keep going, whole hum the whole way. Uh, something else to point out in this game: Grand Rapids goals per game, three point one one. White Bear, three point four three. They're not high scoring teams. No, I, I don't see this as a high scoring affair either. Yeah, I mean we talked about in the pregame goals would be coming at a premium and. It just, it's, you don't want to be that person where you say, oh, well, one nothing, and, you know, there's still plenty of time. There is still plenty of time, but yeah. also it should be noted that that, that you is. You need to score. That is a massive, massive goal. So you need to, you know, if you're the Bears, I don't think you want to you maybe hopefully learn that lesson last Friday. Um, they might still be confident, and they should be confident. They're a very good hockey team, but you don't want to be too confident and, uh, yeah, all of a sudden, you know, come to and there's three minutes left in the game, and uh, you know you still haven't scored. So they gotta hopefully make some changes, make some adjustments. We'll see what uh, Chris Anderson, uh, Brandon Wallen, among others on that staff, have to uh, put together. Of course, Grant Clapton, he's he's got experience as well. Yep. Um, he he knows what to do in that locker room, and so just uh, a very interesting. Dynamic, no penalties in the first period, which is good news, I think, more for White Bear Lake than it is yeah. for Grand Rapids. The, the Bears have struggled this year with penalties, and, and they got, almost got themselves into big trouble against Hill Murray, and thankfully they, their penalty kill came up big. To put it frank, they've had a lot of practice this year. They should be yeah. good. Um, but that's a, that's a key because if there's any special teams here, Thunderhawks 24.7%. 80% on the penalty kill. White Bear Lake, for for their part, it's uh, similar numbers, I believe, here. Is they're 21.5% on the power yeah. play, not great. But on the penalty kill, 92%. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty key. impressive. And uh, well, we'll see. But a very, uh, very loosely called game in the first. Not a lot of opportunities to call no. penalties. But I didn't feel that way. Yeah, but uh, there was one tripping some, call that didn't get called. Right, and Let's then put some it pushing way. and yeah. cross checks and stuff like that after yeah. the whistle. But yeah, uh, where where's the faith at right now? I have no idea. I'm lost. <laughs> Blind faith? I, I mean, again, I, I, I mean, as a it, it's hard because I'm not a I'm not a good fan because I've been, I've been hurt <laughs> at literally every level. I mean, the whole. 203 golfers like the national championship yeah. golfers i was still too young to really fully process sure. all that sure so i'm a fan of white bear leg which has never won a no quarterfinal game i'm a fan of the wild which we you know i want to go down that road yeah and uh you know every other i mean minnesota sports teams haven't at least the men haven't been to uh, a championship in my lifetime. So I haven't even been there. I don't even need the win. How about a run? Yeah, the only run would have been the wild, right? Right, to the conference final, which, again, was right around that time when I was eight, nine years old. And yeah. I kind of enjoyed it, but I barely remember it. And I, I feel like the Vikings need to hit a Super Bowl, too. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, so, yeah, I'm just not a good sports fan because I, I don't I know. know how to be a sports fan. I've done. I've been nothing. I've had nothing, but just pain and suffering when it comes to postseason action. So, uh, we'll see. I'd love to see the Bears turn it around. Looks like block shots five to three in favor of the Thunderhawks. Faceoff one, all White Bear twelve to one. Yeah, I, I did notice that they were. 
Very good in the faceoff circle. Eight, eight hits, though, for Grand Rapids. They are a physical team, like we said. Defensively, they are sound. Their decor is the best. Luca Roloff is arguably the best player on this squad, and he leads their D. Ugh. Shout out to Paul Lambert, Paul and Edina, oh. tuning in. Nice. How you doing, Sauce? Well, uh, we are moments away from the teams taking the ice. And We'll see what, what we'll have uh, in store here, Danny. I, uh, this middle frame, I don't know if that's going to decide anything. I feel like this is uh, uh, the third period is going to be pretty big here. I think these teams are going to be pretty close. This is one of my favorite things of the tournament, Olay by the Grand Rapids band. This is, this is a sights and sounds. We don't have a mic up no. good enough, but... Uh, I, I, this is like the Edina warm, uh, you know, puck drop song for me. I love Olay. Love those uh, little traditions, Grand Rapids. Yeah. Getting a, a brand new roof and a brand new arena name, and also a lot of good things happening for the Thunderhawks. And so far, so good here in St. Paul. Eight saves for. Carter Casey, their goaltender. Uh, and uh, interesting too, they had three uh, three goaltenders out for warmups tonight. And they they have skated three goaltenders throughout. It's it's a problem for the Grand Rapids team. When I interviewed Coach Clafton earlier in the year. It was a, he mentioned how it was a problem. It's hard having three really, really good goaltenders. It would be nice to have three really good forwards, let's put it that way, but goaltenders is kind of hard. Yeah, it's uh, it's not like you can cycle through all that and, and you look at. I said, I said to him, why don't you play one per period <laughs> <laughs> at that point? Carter Casey, nine and six on the year. Ryan Kerr, four and six on the year, and then uh, Ryder Miskovich four and one on the air, so a very a, a very unique thing. I don't know you see, yeah. you don't see too often where three, not only four. do you have a split, but you have a three way split basically with one uh, obviously getting a little bit more action in Carter Casey, which you you have to pick one, and they go with interestingly enough the soft one. Yeah, so Coach Clafton said that they sat all three of them down at the start of the year and said we're gonna have to split time and then we're going to have to choose one. And all three of them were, were like, yep, we understand. It makes sense. And they're all for each other, too. If, if, if During the, um, you know, the lineups and everything, when they were calling names, the goaltenders were wearing talls. They were excited, too. They were just as excited to be out on the ice. So uh, truly, I, I, it's a team mentality between those three. Thunderhawks making their way back onto the ice. White Bear Lake doing the same. And obviously, one of those cool things, Danny, is, is just being able to come out of the tunnel at the X. You know? Oh, completely. We, we, they talked about it, you know, with the with the, the women, the, the girls tournament, the girls state hockey tournament. Yes. Which obviously the, the crowds aren't um, as big and and people have wondered, like, would it be better to have a better atmosphere played at a smaller building? And no. The the constant thing from players is, we don't care about the you know the the empty seats or anything. We we want to play in the big building with the big video board and the yeah. lights and and the tunnels and everything. And, and they um, it, it, there is something to be said too about how cool it is that that uh, you know we get to do all this. We get to call it with replay and NHL style stuff it's it's a unique deal and uh, we're happy those of you joining us wherever you are uh, listening from uh, this evening thank you for tuning in say on the chat where you're yeah. tuning in from yeah where are you who's from? the farthest away where are you beaming in from so no faith from Sam he says there oh wow no wow that's Sam just Barley. cold that's cold yeah mute that wow you started to talk. <laughs> the K-Fan account turns into a white bear mute session. Yeah, pretty much. 
I'm gonna have to mute. I'm gonna have to turn my phone off. I think. <laughs> All right, back here for period number two. Danny Ryan. I'm Zach Halverson. Thanks for tuning in on a Thursday night. Some high school hockey for you from the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. The Thunderhawks leading the Bears. One nothing after one. Period two underway, and it's stumped in deep into the Grand Rapids zone. Thunderhawks immediately break it back out. They'll work it down the ice. Left corner of the White Bear Lake side. Olsen handles it for White Bear Lake. Crosses his own blue line, gains the line, and then fires it off the glass behind the Grand Rapids goal. Tracked down here by Eckerly. Played forward. Take a bouncing puck. We've seen a lot of yeah. weird bounces tonight. You know, it just happens with this ice. There's only so much they can do when it's hosting this much action in one day and now two days and two of four not to mention two of the five two yeah. of six I mean, two of seven basically here's a chance for the bears shot there taken by timmons and that's denied by casey but the uh, pwhl minnesota played on tuesday full slate of games wednesday and uh now another full slate today so eventually can they'll do their best but Certainly will be a factor as the weekend goes along. Well, and the boards are bouncier than normal than most of these kids are used yes. to. And that always plays a factor in these matchups. At the half wall, here's Alon driving the goal backhand. Easily sticked aside by Casey. Bears get the rebound. They go behind the goal. And then a Buto centering pass caught by the Thunderhawks and cleared out to center. Good look there for Garski as he... Set up shop in front of his goal and steered it down the ice into White Bear Lake territory. Two minutes gone here in the second. Up to neutral ice it goes. Selsky poking it forward for White Bear Lake, getting some help from Villela, but the Thunderhawks steal it away and they'll backhand it deep into the White Bear Lake end where Selsky retreats, fires a quick pass forward here. And up the ice come the Bears. It's Newlander gaining the line. Katie, Casey stops it behind the Thunder Hot goal. Rung around the wall to neutralize. Bears have it. Poke it forward there up in the air. And then Noah Norman will send it in as Villela touches up behind the Thunder Hot goal. Villela putting a hit on here as the puck cleared to the blue line but kept in. Fired over the goal by Noah Driscoll, allowing the Thunderhawks to get it back out to center. Left wing side, a pass across to Newlander on the right side. Here comes Evan Newlander to his left. Chance for Norman. Norman with the shot, hits a stick and goes wide. No, Norman got his own rebound, played it to the blue line for Zach Bay, who couldn't keep it in, sends it hard off the wall as he returns it to Norman. The Bears will dump it in, get some much-needed line changes as the Thunderhawks send it down the ice. It'll be picked up by Blake Eckerly. Eckerly will send it in as the Bears touch up again. Behind the Thunderhawk goal, the puck goes forward to Gavin Forrest to the blue line and then pushed on goal and lightly touched aside by Casey. As that felt like that puck took forever to get from the blue line to the goal, but Casey making the save. Bears keep it in at the line. It's played across to some open ice and the only one there on the ice to grab it is the Thunderhawks there. Gunderson flipping it to center. And then it's pushed back in deep behind the Grand Rapids goal. Grand Rapids trying to clear. Alaska getting in the way of it momentarily. Now it's Olsen at the red line for White Bear Lake. He'll wrist it hard to his left for Eckerly, who dumps it in. And again, Casey stops it behind his goal. Comes out in front for the Bears. A chance drop pass to the blue line. Across. Distad with the Ooh. shot. And it bounces just wide of the Grand Rapids goal. In the corner, flipped up in the air. And it goes out of play into the... White Bear Lake bench, so certainly uh, something starting the cook for White Bear Lake offensively. Just can't seem to get it to the goal itself. That was a good opportunity there, and a couple of good flourishes, and a lot of good zone time. Uh, Grand Rapids having struggles to try to break it out and contain uh, and start to push through the neutral zone as White Bear is continually to hold. Off the draw behind the Grand Rapids goal. It's skated forward by Luca Roloff. He'll find Kyler Miller, and Miller, the Thunderhawks, will drive it in behind the White Bear Lake goal. Distad trying to maneuver it free here for White Bear Lake. At the half ball, Distad knocks it off the boards to center. 
Roloff will get it back and he will once again cross that red line and fire it deep behind the White Bear Lake goal. Selsky lets it go by him for Stanius. Stanius is met with some contact by Roloff. He'll retreat, watches this dad grab it before he takes a hit off the puck. And now it's Nolan Road who moves it forward for Lasko who flips it to center. And the Thunderhawks send it back into the White Bear Lake end for Selsky to pick up for White Bear Lake. Stanius fires it on goal from the Ooh. red line. Casey off his glove. Almost a misplay there, too. Almost, but his defense helped. And now here's Buto for the Bears, a weak angle shot off the side of the cage. Got it back behind the goal as he fights Roloff for it. Timmons comes down to help out as well for White Bear, but great work by Luca Roloff fighting off a couple of Bears in the process. Bears just keep it in. They fire a shot, but it's stopped again by, guess who? Luca Roloff. Roloff all over the ice for Grand Rapids. Buto. Passes it to the corner for Bay as the Bears backed up in their zone. Lalon trying to skate across his own blue line, does so. Works it to his left in the direction of Driscoll. Bears get it in, but they lose it as they cross the blue line of Grand Rapids. And the Thunderhawks will work it in without a stick and just taking a big hit was Gavin Forrest. Back to the blue line, a shot that's blocked goes right over to the left. Another shot, and Gabriel hangs on, denying Alexander Salisbury. A great shot that just happened to fall on his stick. A great shot block, Danny, but uh, a better bounce for Grand Rapids there. Yeah, and it almost felt like Kyler Miller had a tip attempt that he didn't get a good piece out of, too. Okay, first TV timeout of the period. And another opportunity for these guys to, to take a rest. We, we were talking earlier. It definitely feels like these are, I think, about 30 seconds longer than they were yeah. last year. So they're roughly a little over two minutes. So um, in the press conference, Creedence head coach uh, Matt Funk had a good point that, you know, TV timeouts are nice unless you're going up against somebody like Harper Searle's line. And I think that Coach Clafton is feeling the same way. TV timeouts are great unless Nolan Rhodes coming out there against you every single time. And uh, it'll be interesting as this game goes along, as the Bears continue to be off one nothing. And by the way, what a satisfying scoreboard that is right now. One to nothing, 11 minutes oh. exactly remaining. Yeah, that's satisfying. <laughs> I like that a lot. Very, very uh, even there. That's 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 the stuff. But anyway, <laughs> wow. The uh, the Bears. Uh, how much do the Nolan, does Nolan Road and Jack Stanius and Kevin Laska play the rest of the way? How much does, uh, does and I Chris think Anderson that, ride them? So let's say White Bears down going into the third, hypothetically. I think Nolan's going to be out there every other shift, even if his line is not out there. He's going to play at, at least 40 minutes, 35. You know, it's going to be heavy coming down the stretch. It, and you have to. He he is the you know the player to watch. He's the forward. I when you have a Mr. Hockey candidate, you play the Mr. Hockey candidate. There isn't much more than that. You just have to play the cards that you're dealt. And when you have an ace, you got to play it. Back underway here in St. Paul. Clock ticking down, under 11 to go in the second as the Bears win the faceoff, work it down the ice. A left side shot from Road is off the back wall, goes on goal, and again, we'll talk about it probably too much over the course of the weekend, but the way these boards bounce for these shots, these players uh, not used to that totally, and you gotta be, I would imagine that's something that goaltenders pay very close attention to, because. Some of those rebounds off the back wall can be very dangerous. And I, I've talked to a lot of goaltenders that's played in this tournament. It's not only that they bounce quicker they, or harder, the goal line there is pushed back closer to the boards. And so it's a lot. Alaska chance out in front. It bounces on goal and a beautiful save by Casey cutting across and finding it. That was a very close, weird hop play. 
It almost ended up in the back of the Thunderhawk neck. It's Might have been intentional even by Road. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that Didn't was Didn't get what he wanted on it, but, but at least it was still was the idea was there. Draw one by the Bears again. Eckerly at the point. Looks for options. Kind of whiffed on the shot. It was easily blocked by the Thunderhawks, and they work it back out to neutral. Roll off in offside. I'll tell you one thing as this game goes along, Danny, that's going to be very key for White Bear Lake success is they are being are very potent in the faceoff circle. And, and that was clear in the first period. They won the faceoffs 12 to 1. Do you, are you going to pull up the stats on us? That's what we're doing. Okay. Bear with us. As this fast is, as we can. I wonder what logos we're going to get. Oh, oh, we actually got good logos this time. 16 to 3 in favor of wow. White Bear Lake. So wow. They will need to take advantage of that eventually here as they look for that equalizer. Kept in by Selsky, but Grand Rapids on the second attempt will skate it out through neutral ice. Chance for the Thunderhawks. A shot blocked to the corner by Stanius. Back at that right half wall. Sent down low by Garski behind the White Bear Lake goal. Poked around by Eckerly or make that Selsky forward to Stanius. Stanius with a cross ice pass out of the reach of everyone. And that a lot of Thunderhawks to control, at least for the moment. Luca Roloff, who I don't think has left the ice all game. No. His pass taken away by Stanius, and then Roloff rides Stanius hard into the boards as he gets back up here, gets some help as it's poked back to the blue line. Played across by Bay, and then a shot from the left side blocked in front, and the Thunderhawks will skate it back out to center. Bears steal it right back. Vinny Villilla fights his way in, goes to the right circle, behind the goal. Out of the corner for Garski. Garski let it go by him, and it's cleared out the center before the Bears send it right back deep. Bears will have to touch up. So an easy out for Grand Rapids, and it's Luka Roloff. Surprise, surprise. Anybody wants to keep a tally at home on Luka how much we Roloff. call number seven's name tonight on the Grand Rapids side as that puck will go down for an icing with 8.53 to go in the second. one nothing Grand Rapids. Physicality continuing to pick up here as this game goes along. And it's yep. kind of the classic, Danny, we see the, the, the North versus Metro teams. Northern teams like to play the body a little bit more. Yep. And less skilled, the quote unquote, too. Yes. The problem is these Northern teams are also very skilled now yeah. as well. So yeah. mm, double whammy here as the Bears work it down the ice. No one Norman backhands it through the Blue paint to the far corner. Worked out in front. Newlander gets some help there from Norman as he skates it across the slot area. Back to Eckerly at the blue line, who flips it up in the air and into the stands. So not what he was looking to do there. Face off, I think, will be inside it's, the. Yeah, it should still be inside. Yeah. Uh. And a Moundsview fan gets the puck. So. It's a little, nice little keepsake. Congratulations to that Moundsview Irondale fan. Have you ever caught a puck or a ball out of game? Uh, Saints game, baseball. A Twins game, baseball, and I've heckled really? for a baseball at a Twins game too when I was a kid. Congratulations. Thank you. Grand Rapids trying to find an outlet here on the breakout, and they finally do here as it's played from right to left across the ice. Now in to the White Bear Lake zone it goes. Shimon behind the net, raced after, just out of the reach of Olsen. Back behind the White Bear Lake goal now. Eckerly chases after it. Speaking of baseball, Blake Eckerly going to Utah to play baseball. His coach, Chris Anderson, wants him to play D1 hockey, but in uh, Coach Anderson's words, he just he likes baseball. So <laughs> what can you do? Not much there. Thunderhawks send it down the ice. It'll go wide of the White Bear Lake goal. Olsen to Timmons. The Bears work the breakout. Race for the puck is on Buto trying to get after it, but he's beaten to that puck by Salisbury, who slides it to Luka Roloff, and his pass doesn't connect. Goes into the White Bear Lake zone anyway. Falls down in the left circle, played out to center. 
Bauer Murphy for Grand Rapids. Goes cross ice to the far corner where Will Distad will pick up for White Bear Lake. Skates behind his goal. Looking after it is Buto. But the Thunderhawks steal away. A little give and go now behind the goal. Out to the top of the circle. A shot hits a body. Goes wide to the White Bear Lake net. Grand Rapids picks it up again along that blue line. Another shot. Maybe catching a piece was Gabriel as the puck is worked free back to the blue line. Roll off trying to keep it in front of him. Does so. Great job by the Thunderhawks holding the blue line. Distad just wanting to swat it out. Does so. And I don't know how you're going to call that an icing. I guess if, if For all the icings what that we, have been called off. For all off, the ones that were called off on Grand Rapids. It, it, like there was clear attempt was to attempt, touch that it puck. Was just, oh, Everything. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe because it was Luca Roloff attempting. Of course. <laughs> Luca Roloff, two goals, nine assists on the year. And about a billion minutes of playing time. They don't keep track of uh, time on ice in high school, but if they did, I would imagine. Some do, actually. Zach. Oh, really? Yeah, so some uh, um, schools have analytics for Here's it. Here's Roe to Stanius. Stanius to his left for Alaska. Alaska. His pass broken up, loose in front, race for the puck there, <laughs> won by the Thunderhawks on a broken play, trying to clear, couldn't do so. Now they run into Driscoll, who fires the puck deep into the Grand Rapids end. Corner to corner pass here. Thunderhawks working up the right side now, cutting across center ice. And into the zone comes Grand Rapids. Some nice moves here, but a good play by Driscoll. Swatting it to the corner, and then a centering attempt picked up by Laska. And a big Whoa. hit put on by Nolan Rowe. And here comes Stanius now. One on two entered the, as he entered the zone. Lost it as he crossed the blue line. And the Thunderhawks. Uh, okay, icing doesn't exist for the Thunderhawks. That is, but that's like the fourth one of the period. I, do, <laughs> I, I, know. I know I'm looking through orange-tinted glasses here, but. But still, you would see the icing. I don't icing. know that's not an icing. Anyway. Uh, right wing side into the White Bear Lake zone it goes. The Thunderhawks trying to get some more pressure on Leo Gabriel. Instead, the Bears break it out. Stanius, tail end of a long shift, sends it forward for the stick of Will Distad. And then a centering pass broken up by Grand Rapids. They play it out. And then it's a one-on-one -on -one entering the zone from left to right. A shot missing wide. Takes a... Dangerous hop back out in front as uh, Gus, Gus Drennan with a great look for Grand Rapids on that one on one, and he'll get it back again. A try for Den Drennan from the a weak angle is knocked away off the wall by Villela to center, scooped up by Seth Carlson for Grand Rapids as the Thunderhawks regroup in their own zone. In front of the penalty box, Selsky slides it forward, but then the Thunderhawks steal it right back and fire it around. Bears will turn around and grab the puck off the back of the goal here. Distad runs into some trouble behind the goal. Thunderhawks with some a little bit of edge in their game now after much of the second has been played out of the White Bear Lake zone. Back to the blue line. It's roll off with the shot and it goes just wide of the post there. To the corner, Norman. As Norman will carry it behind his goal, gathers some speed, cuts into the zone now, right corner. Knock it back behind, gets his stick uh, as it was knocked out of his hand. And then a nice poke check, goes, puck goes back to Norman, looking for options here on the turnover. Olsen with the shot in Ooh. front. Newlander tried to deflect it toward the goal, couldn't get it on goal. Now it's Eckerly. He scored some big goals in the section tournament. Back to Eckerly at the blue line. To the half wall now, forward. Back in the direction of Eckerly. Instead, Newlander goes down low for Villela. And then spinning and firing a shot was Timmons. And that is gloved and covered with 3.10 to go in the second period. 20 minutes, 10 seconds of regulation remains. It's got another look at that Nolan Road hit as well, and that that'll look heavy. good on the uh, on the demo reel for sure. Not that he <laughs> needs it, but. And so second TV timeout, that's what we're in right now. And this is when we talk face-offs again, 18 to four in favor of White Bear Lake. If they can, if that keeps 
It's ridiculous. Trending that way, it, it's you know, it's stuff like it's stuff like this, Danny, where you combine the faceoffs with the the TV timeout and yeah. a draw in the Grand Rapids zone. Yeah, you got to take advantage of this. You really like like it. That is one thing that uh, Tim Sager, their previous head coach, was known for over the years was really good set faceoff plays, and it's one of the reasons why they would oftentimes tie games late in the third with an empty netter. They would with an empty net uh, yeah. because they would have a really good play off the draw. So we'll see if uh, Coach Anderson wants to. Uh, they're not drawing anything up, obviously, but perhaps just get them focused again and see what they can do. Assuming they win the face off. If not, well, the, the, the kind of fun part is these two coaches were um, teammates in college. Did you know that? Were, really? Yeah, they were teammates at S SCSU. SCSU. That's very cool. Yeah. So very familiar with each other. Yeah, and Moorhead head coach John Ammerman, you throw that in there too um, in this time frame. It's John a little surprised. Uh, always weird when, when Moorhead's not down here. I know, I know. And uh, congratulations to Section 8. Yeah, Elk River making it to the state tournament. First time in forever, it seems like. But, yeah. Looking at some sights and sounds all over the tournament. Love, uh, love the support. A late night here in St. Paul. Coming up on 10 o'clock. Face off to the right of Carter Casey. It's won by the Bears. Selsky skates it down low. Goes behind the goal. Looks for a wraparound. A shot taken loose still in the slot area. Played to the outside. And the Thunderhawks will skate it out of danger. Kyler Miller goes from blue line to blue line and takes a heavy hit in the process. Selsky picks up the loose change. Gives it over for Distad. And then a quick break all pass doesn't connect. And uh, we'll be play oh wait, there's oh. icing. Oh yeah, I, didn't, I forgot I, about that. Yeah, icing exists. But again, Zach, that was your face-off play right yes. there. That was a really good opportunity for the Bears, and that was drawn up during that TV timeout, guaranteed. Oh. Yeah, Bears trying to, I would imagine, keep that faith here, keep the confidence. The, the Thunderhawks. Off the fa a rare faceoff win. Had a look for a moment, but it immediately collapsed, and the Bears able to break it out to center. And they draw a penalty in the process as Gabriel's going to touch it here. I don't think he knows quite yet that the no. hand is up. And he yeah, now will he make does. his way. So the Bears just slow things down behind their cage and let that uh, extra skater go out with the delayed penalty with 2.14 to go in period number two. Up the ice. I don't like dropping it back to nobody. No, <laughs> not great. Eckerly, you you don't like it. How do you think I feel? <laughs> that empty net. Buto can't handle the pass, and that will be touched up by the Thunderhawks. And with 1.53 to go in the second period, we have our first penalty of the game. It's going to be interference on Bauer Murphy and a great opportunity White Bear Lake 21.5 percent on the power play Thunderhawks 80.4 percent on the penalty kill not a must score power play to any but they would very much like to go to the locker room a little bit happier here yeah create some offense creates some chances and then you can go into the locker room with some just that along the blue line left circle pass over to nolan road now to the corner nolan road gets it back at the half wall finds the blue line for distad now right circle for stanius and then a shot goes off over to stanius who fires one and it's covered up by casey Carter Casey saw that the whole way for Grand Rapids, just moved over and casually was right in the spot where Jack Stanius was shooting. Stanius got the game winner in the section final, 36 seconds in. He'll have the faceoff 
win on his stick, slides it to his left, gets it back on the top of the circle, now goes to Distad, road to the left, road, fires a shot save, loose in front, and the Thunderhawks handle it here. They're just going to skate it out. They could have iced it, but they'll kill more time by just skating it down the ice. Gabriel now forced to cover up as uh, a great pressure put on by Nathan Garski and an interesting uh, aggressive penalty kill put on by the Thunderhawks. Yeah, they're not laying back right now, and especially with Bauer Murphy in the box, one of their top D men. There's a minute 15 on the clock. Eight seconds will carry over to the third period if this is still an active power play as the Bears skated in offside. Ugh. Never go offsides on a power play. Evan Newlander a little bit too excited there. It's one of the 24 rules. Actually. Clock stops with 69 seconds to go in period number two. Draw one by the White Bear Lake Bears. Evan Newlander fires it hard. It wraps all the way around to the far wall for Road to pick up. He'll shovel it back for Distad. Now Distad returns it to Road. Now to Stanius. Stanius oh. whiffs on the shot. Puck comes free. Stanius gets it back, takes a hard hit into the wall, and that allows the puck to come free for Luka Roloff, who will backhand it deep into the White Bear Lake end. Distad shakes a defender there as he gives it over for Rode. Rode into the skates of Stanius, but Newlander adjusts and skates it in. Newlander's shot, that hits a shin pad and goes to the corner. Trying to keep it in and doing so is Rode. Tiptoes along the blue line. Here's Rode. Rode with a chance. Backhand pass oh. to the left. Goes to Distad. Distad sends it down low, and the Thunderhawks will take that and easily clear it out. I think Rode thought Distad was in a certain spot, and he wasn't. Rode at the red line. Fighting off a defender here still with the puck is Rode. He'll drive his way in. Rode moving in. Fires a shot. It hits a stick and goes into the netting with 6.5 to go in the second period. Face off in the offensive zone. That was a big hit it looked like that they showed there by Kyler Miller. But again, not called. Draw to the right of Casey. Again, we mentioned eight seconds will carry over as the Thunderhawks win the draw, they'll ice it, and that'll do it for period number two. The Thunderhawks hang on to that one nothing lead. They got four minutes. They got the goal four minutes and four seconds into period one. That's the difference so far through two periods of play. Yeah. It's kind of a mirror image of the section final for White Bear, just they're the ones chasing the goal. You know, not a lot of offense by both teams. Goaltending is still standing up. Yeah. The, I, what does White Bear need to do? Like, other than score, obviously, but like, they're having a lot of opportunities. There's yeah. just not a lot of great A's. Well, it, it, it's, they need to find another gear and they need to find it fast because, yeah. um, I mean, they're, they've slowly, but slowly gotten better as the game has gone along, but they need to pick up the pace on that because while they finally started getting some chances in that second, and they're, to their credit, they are at this point um, still getting outshot 17 to 16. So yeah. even though they probably have the puck more than Grand Rapids in that second, they still haven't been able to uh, get it to the goal, and that is uh, certainly uh, not helping them as we get closer and closer to the final 17. And if you're Grand Rapids, you got to like where you're at right now. This is a perfect spot. You can sit back and keep playing your defensive hockey, rely on Carter Casey, who's having a good night, the only thing that I'd be worried about if Rapids is these face-offs are going to eventually bite you. Yeah, 21 to 8, so they definitely started to cut in a little bit to a that, but, but not much. Not much. I mean, face-offs normally are, like, even to three or four in one direction, but to be ahead of 13 after two, that's impressive. That is um, – a very good job, and we mentioned that that face-off play with Selsky, and yeah, and that's the thing. It's uh, it, it just 
you know, I think if you're in the locker room, it's cliche, but I think at this point you just got to open fire whenever you can yeah. and, and cause chaos because uh, being, I don't even want to say being pretty, but just being normal, they are clogging up, the, the Thunderhawks are clogging up that, that ice in front of their goal. Yeah, they are. So effectively that it's, they're not, the, the Bears aren't getting the scoring chances that they want. So at this point, you know, they've got some really good fast skaters that can drive to that goal. Some, you know, they don't have a lot of size, and in some cases that helps you. They can kind of yeah. sneak through and, and slither through toward the goal. So Completely. I think if uh, if I'm the coach, which thank goodness I'm not Chris Anderson, <laughs> um, that is a job I do not want to have no. right now uh, heading into this third pier with all the pressure and, and, and everything involved. But, um, yeah, I just I think at this point if you're White Bear, you got to – you got to fire everything you can at that net. And also, you're going up against a sophomore goaltender. Yeah. And Carter Casey is a very good goaltender, but he's a sophomore. Yeah. Okay, so test him. And give him odd shots. Give him weird you know, opportunities and weird bounces and see what happens. Yeah, get him moving. Create something. That it just, is it, it, nothing's been created, it doesn't nothing. feel, there feel like. There haven't been, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this last Friday uh, night, Danny. There haven't been very many oh, whoa moments. No, you know, and, and not that's, at all. That's uh, That's got to change here in this third period. And, uh, you gotta, you got to keep the faith, got to keep uh, keep the, the positive vibes, if you will. But um, that clock quickly becoming uh, a an enemy of White Bear Lake, and it, it might sound preposterous at, 17 minutes left to start talking about the clock but as we talked about in the pregame it's just it's so it, we knew that this was going to be a low scoring yeah. affair these goaltenders are very very good and every single goal is going to be very hard earned so the fact that you need two to play at least two now to play Friday yeah um, at least one in the next 17 that's that's not an easy task as crazy as it sounds so no I <laughs> I do think you start looking at the clock right now. Yeah. I, I, I think you do, just because of the grade A chances aren't Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And and start stretching out some passes, too, and taking some – I think you might want to start taking some chances, too, try to – Completely agree. Make make Grand Rapids sweat. Mm. Get off of your game to get them off of their game right now. But when you fall into their one-two-two, they're they're gonna eat you up, and they're yeah. gonna force you into stretch passes and force you to try to break it out by skating through it, and it's very hard to do with their good decor. And this is two games back to back for White Bear, going against top decors in the state. The fact of the matter is here. I mean, it's going to the mind of a Bears fan right now, which you don't want to ever do, but it, it just not again starts creeping in. It's it's unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, it, we talk about curses and everything, and I know there's no supernatural effect here and no paranormal stuff, but, like, man, it's... It starts to feel like that after really, a while. It, it feel, it, it, the feeling here for me... It, it, it's getting close to hopeless, and uh, it, it shouldn't be. And I know it's different kids. It's it's a completely isolated from 11, 05, 03, 01, all of them. I know it's completely isolated, yeah. but in my lifetime, in my mother's lifetime, and uh, she would say she's a she went to Mariner for a couple of years, so oh, she, she likes, won. She claims she the won. Dolphin, so I guess I'll give her, <laughs> but. In generations of Bears fans, they've never seen a win, and it's it's just yeah. And I, you know, you know too. Let's just we'll just really open this up here. You know, you're going to you know whoever wins is ninety nine point nine nine percent going to lose to the Dino Hornets tomorrow. Yeah, they're which is why this game feels so much more important in a way because like. We know we're not. You know you're not going to win state probably, but you at least want to win a game at state every once in a while. And the fact that they, if you're just tuning in, White Bear Lake, the team on the right, the WBL there, 
They played in the first ever state tournament game in 1945, scored the very first goal in state tournament history, lost the very first game in state tournament history and lost 18 more after that. Now on the verge, if they don't turn this thing around in the 17 minutes that remain, going to be number 20. And, and this is their first Mr. Hockey finalist since 2006 in, in Nolan Road. This is a team that I, I would say that they've been looking forward to in, yeah. for quite some time in White Bear. And that's, that's an, I mean, players like him, as you just said, do not uh, come around often. And ones that do nowadays tend to leave. And Nolan, as you, you talk to him and you yeah. know this, it was it was never even a second thought for him to leave. He wanted to come back. It was an intentional move to come back because he wanted to bring this team to the state tournament. He's done that. He wants to win this game, and he's going to do everything he can. But Yeah, when I talked to Nolan, because he was like, yeah, I don't know why everybody was saying that I wasn't coming back from Tri-City. There ain't no, there wasn't no expletive way I wasn't coming back from Tri City. I was always coming back. Yeah. And, and he's coming back for this. And yeah. the, the Road family lives for the state high school hockey tour. And they got another one on the way here, too. Just as good. Yes. And, and uh, so that's that, that's the one cool thing about that family. And it's uh, it's I hate to, to say the whole cliche, but man, it is it is frustrating as all heck right now. It is. Uh, These have been two so-so periods by the Bears. You want to see a little I bit more. I want them to come out with fire. And uh, and we saw Creighton do that. To see the team we saw against in, uh, Stillwater in yeah. the semifinals to see. I mean, that will be on a section final. Bears weren't great. They just were just enough but even then they came out of the gates firing we need first shift first period yeah. to come out here in three minutes and just light this place up yeah get the crowd entertained uh, because you know we've only hear, heard the student section chant wiper nation what once yeah you know they they've had little to cheer for and hats off to luca roll off and the Thunderhawks for that, but truly, yeah. the Bears have just, they're struggling right now. Yeah, Luca Roloff, let's give, uh, we've talked a lot of White Bear Lake, let's talk a little Grand Rapids. Sure. And, and man, Luca Roloff. He's the player. Phenomenal. He's the player right now. And, and coming Thorn into in the, the game. side sounds about right. Yeah, and he's all over the place. He's a very, very good defenseman. He's a junior. Obviously, he's a watch list for Mr. Hockey. Next year, he is that good. Uh, bringing his team to state is, you know, good enough to get you into that watch list category. But when you watch him play, he is all over the ice, very heady. And this whole Grand Rapids team just, it, it seems like right now they have buy-in to game, the game plan. And, and they are shutting it down. And hats off to them. And they have to know, you know, on the flip side, White Bear is going to come out strong. Or at least they should. And if you're Grand Rapids, you know that's coming. Right? So the, if you're Rapids, you have to be prepared for that at the start of this period. If, if you're it, White Bear Lake, you use the man advantage to yep. your advantage. And yep. use the, hopefully you continue that trying to face off wins and you do that. Yep. And if you're Grand Rapids, you know that they're coming out. And you know that you have a guy in the box in, in seven yep. seconds. So yep. you keep that in the back of your mine too because bears dump it in you can maybe try to sneak up one behind them and I, I i mean it's again another cliche here but the next goal is massive well massive yeah if rapids goes up two nothing right now it, it doesn't feel, feel yeah like it doesn't over. feel like ooh, white bears scoring three no. right now feels like uh another a rapids goal would be a dagger and it feels like a white bear lake goal would lead to another White Bear Lake goal. Yeah, it, getting the equalizer would go a long way. 
Uh, any good comments coming in? Exactly. I'm being called the wet blanket. Oh, no. Of course, the hot, hot goaltender, Minnesota Norm McDonald. Uh, wow. Yeah, McDonald. Big Norm guy. Probably something in the water. We At least we have water again. That's good. <laughs> we didn't have water for a while. People forget that. We had, like, Camp Green Lake out there for the longest time. At least we have water. And, uh, yeah, I think Hugo came in, stole all of our water for a while. And then, uh, then there was just all of a sudden one day water came back. So <laughs> it's good to have water in the lake. It's always fun. Oh. All righty, folks, settle in. 17 minutes of regulation, as we always have to say. My poor little heart can't handle overtime, so let's not do that, huh? I'm here for that. Overtime, that is. Ugh, don't do that. <laughs> Say it three times so it doesn't happen. Overtime, overtime, overtime. <laughs> I think that's how it works, right? Okay, yeah. And the jinx is gone. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Speaking of jinxes, Carter Casey pitching a 16-save shutout right now. Try it, try it. That's impressive. I don't believe in jinxes, so it really doesn't matter. Oh, there we go. I know jinxes don't exist, believe me. Okay. I know okay. for a fact. Kevin Falness has proven me, or proven that uh, theory very true. So, here we go. So the Rapids band is playing Olay. I don't know if I want to be known as the Carter Gerbstrand of Wiper Hawk. I really wow. don't know if I want to. Wow. Well, you know, I kind of do want to get my own, like, interactive Hockey Day Minnesota 23 exhibit. <laughs> interactive. Actually, I don't, the way that ended. Hopefully this is a much better ending. Off the draw, Blake Eckerley for the Bears enters the Grand Rapids zone, goes behind the Thunderhawks goal. It's played over to Stanius, who fires a weak angle shot. Blocker save for Casey in the left corner, where it's grabbed by Eckerley and returned to the blue line for Road. Road fires a shot down low. By the way, Thunderhawks full strength, very quick start of this period power play. Eckerly fires a shot. That's a save made for Casey as the puck is ringed around the wall again. Kept in by Eckerly. Played to the circle. Here's Stanius. He couldn't pull the trigger. Poked off his stick and the Thunderhawks send it down the ice. It'll go deep into the White Bear Lake again. Just one hand into the half wall by Leo Gabriel. Bears come away with the puck. Played forward here up the right side. Tanner Olsen. Olsen's shot goes through Wide of the goal, bounces back to the blue line, kept in by the Bears, played to the corner. They're going to complete a line change, so the Thunderhawks will easily break it out. And up the right wing side comes Garski. He'll fire a shot that's turned away and covered by Leo Gabriel. Play stop 63 seconds into period number three. Just swallowed on that one. Again, stop the rebounds from happening. Just let them come in and smother them out. Leo Gabriel with a really good save there. Well, you want to go back on the radio? Oh, really? So we welcome in the radio audience as well. I'm fine with that. That'd be fun, right? Yeah, let's bring them in. At least on FM 96.7. So if you, uh, for some reason, have to like make a late night run to the pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I don't know why you would. We'll uh, continue on here on the YouTube, so you don't need to do anything. We're not. We're just going to add in. We're going to bring in the radio audience here as the puck is played deep in the Grand Rapids Thunderhawk end. It comes out to the top of the circle, and the Thunderhawks will play it out center. Into the zone comes Garski. Garski works across and it's fired through the crease and wide of the goal. The Bears come out with it. Maverick Timmons in for White Bear. Behind the goal. And we welcome you on FM 96.7 KFAN Plus to coverage of high school hockey at the XL Energy Center, Class 2A quarterfinal, White Bear Lake and Grand Rapids battling out 14.44 to go in the third period. The Thunderhawks scored 
at the 4.04 mark of period one, and that is the difference so far, even in the later stages of this one. He's Danny Ryan. I'm Zach Halverson. The Bears trying to find an equalizer. They are now out shooting the Thunderhawks 19 to 18, but have yet to be able to solve goaltender Carter Casey. As the Bears work the puck up the ice, it finds its way into the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks bench. Yeah. Seems like right now White Bear Lake needs to find some sort of offense. They have been stifled all game. And hopefully that will come out by Nolan Road who jumps out on the ice. Him with Jack Stanius, his line mate. Kevin Laska. Face off to the left of Casey, won by the Bears. Olsen at the point, fires a shot, makes its way to Casey. The save is made, takes a weird hop off the official and squirts out in front. Road had a good look, but it squirts free and goes all the way back down the ice. Great clear by the Thunderhawks. Olsen behind his goal looking for options here as he was immediately swarmed by a couple of Thunderhawks. And one of those Thunderhawks and Kyler Miller doing a great job, nearly stole the puck away. Instead, Stanius in support for White Bear Lakes able to flip it to center. Grand Rapids dumping it in deep. Leo Gabriel out of his goal for White Bear Lake. Stanius to his left for Buto. Forward to Stanius. Road trying to help out as well, but he's separated from the puck and Grand Rapids will cut through neutral ice. This stand steals it away for White Bear. His pass off the wall just out of the reach of Stanius. Buto jumping up on the first line, if you notice that, Zach. Yeah, that's that's a wrinkle that we haven't seen yet. And again, uh, there really hasn't been a consistent first line all year long, other than no. Nolan Road, obviously, because yeah. of all the shifting that Chris Anderson has had to do as head coach of the Bears because of injuries, including one to Jack Stanius. And the Bears will like to see him back out there and we'll probably we'll probably see a lot of Stanius and Road the rest of the way as they desperately try to find a goal here still scoreless as the puck is played back to the blue line a shot save rebound oh. over the goal a wide open net for Nathan Garski but it I believe it was knocked off his stick now here's Lasker for White Bear Lake the other way fires a shot wide of the Grand Rapids goal and the Thunderhawks will break it out, but Garski will be having nightmares having for him. Having nightmares for that one. Oof. White Bear Lake. Blake Eckerly to his right to Laska. Bears work their way in. Laska fires one on goal. Stick to side by Casey. To the far corner. Newlander at the half wall. Pinned up against the wall. It is interesting that we're seeing the third line from White Bear still. I would think that they're going to start to go 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. Eventually, I would imagine, as a shot from Molson carries over the Grand Rapids goal. Trying to center it was Villela, but it skipped his stick. Newlander racing after it, but he's beaten to the puck by the Thunderhawks there. Down there to help is Gunderson. Pushed back out to center ice, Eckerly. Little tic tac toe pass, and then Villela's dumping goes right into the skates of Salisbury. And his pass stolen away by the Bears before it's stolen right back. And Grand Rapids will fire it deep into the White Bear Lake end. That clock more and more an enemy of the White Bear Lake Bears with each ticking second. 11 13 to go in period number three as it's knocked off the back wall to Distad. His pass intercepted, fired on goal, and the save is made by Leo Gabriel as the Bears playing with some fire here in this third period as we keep it out here, Danny. And we, uh, again, thank Hepner's Auto Body for presenting uh, the tourney on the fan. I, I think if you're 
Grand Rapids right now, you're playing for the blue line, just chipping it out of your defensive zone every single time, just making White Bear zone enter, making them uh, challenging that every single time. We saw that with some tie-ups there in this last couple shifts. I think they're going to continue to do that. They're going to play small-time hockey and just try to bleed this one to death. And the question will be, can the Bears find a way to break through that, cause some chaos, get a lucky bounce here or there? It's uh, got to be incredibly frustrating in this game for a team that, again, never was a high-scoring team. But no, when you get here and all that excitement, all the buildup, and then being held off the board like this, it's about as frustrating as it gets. And we should expect to see the road line back out there. And for Grand Rapids, guess who's out there already? Number seven, Luka Roloff. Face off in the White Bear Lake zone. Draws now. 23 to 10 in favor of White Bear Lake. So, again, Rapids chipping away as the game has gone on. So that's yep. been good news for the Thunderhawks. But still, the advantage is all White Bear right now. The uh, TV showing highlights of the Mariner Dolphins run to the state championship game. and. I need one of those jerseys. Yeah, you do. They're very nice. Draw one by the Thunderhawks. They work along the top of the circle here, poked back toward the blue line. Staney is trying to shovel it forward, is able to do so as it goes all the way down the ice and into the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks end. Buto now, again, on the top line for the Bears. With Rode and Staney as Thunder, the Thunderhawks come forward. And into the zone they go, back to the blue line, a shot carries over the White Bear Lake goal, hits the glass, bounces to the corner. Selsky there for a moment, but lost it there to the Thunderhawks. Uh, for a moment, Kyler Miller worked free from the puck by Road, and then Roluka Roloff along the, the red line will fire it deep into the White Bear Lake end behind the Bears goal, where it's Gabriel playing it to Selsky. Selsky trying to fight off a hit, he does so, gets it around. Just out of the reach of Distad, who will race after it, fires it forward for Buto, but uh, the Bears at the red line lose it again, and it's sent back deep by the Thunderhawks, killing precious seconds now as we have single digit minutes left here. 9.59 remaining in period three as Stanius cuts his way through. Jack Stanius driving the goal, backhand shot, save made by Casey. Good opportunity there. Backhands are very hard for goaltenders to see. And he took it to his backhand at the last minute. Really good opportunity, but Carter Casey just square to the post and no chance there. Casey looks to his right. Draw one by the Bears, back to Olsen right side. Here's Eckerly back to Olsen. One time shot wide of the goal, still padding it aside was Casey anyway. Thunderhawks get it out to center, and then they'll work it in right side. Chance in front, shot Ooh. saved, Gabriel. Road picks up the rebound, gives it to Stanius, and Stanius will work his way up the ice here. It was offside as he will touch up there, and with nine and a half to go, we'll have a faceoff at neutral ice. I will tell you, Danny, the difference in scoring opportunities. The Bears, I, I mean, I know we said shoot the puck, shoot the puck, but Olsen fires one from the blue line. The puck had no chance, was no. going wide of the goal anyway. And on the other side, a, a great look for the, the, the Thunderhawks. Point blank, the blank with nobody on him, too. Gabriel keeping the Bears in this one so far. And obviously Casey trying to keep that zero on the board. Would love a spot here at Friday night. Bears would love to uh, avoid not going back to Aldridge again. <laughs> Maverick Timmons puts on the brakes as he enters the zone. Tried to go down low, intercepted by the Thunderhawks, and they'll work it down the ice. Drennan cutting across here. Where is the puck? There it is. Picked up by White Bear Lake before it's stolen right back by Drennan for the Thunderhawks. He'll battle with Olsen. Olsen and Drennan, and 
Eventually, Olsen gets the puck free. White Bear Lake in the zone, but offside. Another offside call on White Bear Lake. We saw one earlier on the, the lone penalty of the game. Do we have stats on offsides? Because it seems like it's very high for White Bear Lake right now. And it just, it, there's a number of offsides and icings that have been called on the Bears that it, if they clean that up just a little bit down the stretch, it might be helpful. Bears win the draw, dump it deep behind the goaltender of the Thunderhawks, Carter Casey. Road had it for a moment and then yeah. got his stick caught up under the armpit of a Thunderhawk and will go to the box for hooking. Yeah, and he went straight in. He knew, knew what it was called. So the bad news is for the Bears, not only are you going on the penalty kill, you've actually lost one of your better penalty, your best penalty killer. Though their penalty kill is pretty good. It's at 89.3. It's a really good kill. And 91.3 is a very good number, and they'll need every last percentage point of that as the Bears win the draw and send it down the ice. Casey stops it behind. The Bears run a very aggressive penalty kill, but that's usually when they have number nine out there. We'll see what number eight can do for Jack Stanius as number nine is in the box. Played back here for Roloff to his left. At the point, Luka Roloff, right circle. Chance for Garski to the back door. Just out of the reach of Murphy. Murphy had it and then lost it, and the Bears sent it down the ice. Good aggressive kill there by Will Distad to knock the puck free and get it cleared. 45 seconds gone, 1 minute 15 remain. Here's the Thunderhawks work their way in. A little drop pass from Roloff back to the blue line. Played from Garski to his left. Puck trickles off of Murphy's stick. Takes a big hit in the process. Now Puck comes free in the corner. Pinned up against the wall. Now in front, Chance cleared out briefly. Another try, another shot block that time as Norman drops down and makes the play happen. But the Thunderhawks continue the possession and the pressure here. 45 to go. A point shot goes wide of the White Bear Lake goal off a deflection. Back to Roloff at the point. Now to the right circle. Garski spinning goes back out high. Roloff shot gloved by Gabriel. Good shot there by Roloff, but nothing in front screening. Could have held that for a second longer to create some traffic. Gabriel saw that the whole way. Right down the center of the pipe. Easy glove save for him. 34 seconds to go on the power play. Draw one by the Thunderhawks, that's huge. Roll off to his left, gets it back, slides it to his right here for Shermone, the lone goal scorer in this game. Play to his right, gets it back, Shermone, roll off, left circle, spinning back toward the blue line, goes down low, Bears try to clear, they do so, goes all the way down the ice. Roll off, will handle it here with seven seconds to go in the power play. Thunderhawks work their way in, it's Shermone. Shermone right side, right corner. Road is back out on the ice for White Bear Lake after probably the longest rest he'll have the rest of the way. Yeah. As it's picked up by Distad into the zone, pass to Road, cuts to his left, Road shot, blocked in front, goes to the corner, and Grand Rapids will break it right back out. Eckerly at his own blue line for White Bear Lake to Road. Road forward from left to right. Road moving in, cuts across. Here's Stanius with the shot save. Gets it right back. Try number two. Turned away by Casey, and it's covered. Great smothering save there by Casey, but Jack Stanius, two point blank shots. Steered away. Road creating the opportunities. But like you said, Zach, I actually think it's beneficial that Nolan was in the box there because that's two minutes of non-ice time that he wouldn't have had. No. And, and he's going to be skating a lot in the next six minutes and three seconds. Face off in the Thunderhawk zone. Bears win it back to the point for Eckerly. Now to Olsen to his left. Olsen fires one toward the goal. It's loose in front, but it trickles to the corner where Stanius has it for White Bear Lake. Stanius 
pinned up against the wall. Buto trying to help out as well. He grabbed the puck, but again, he is pinned up against the wall. And now it's Stanius again, and you guessed it, <laughs> driven off the puck and cleared out the center by the Thunderhawks. Olsen spinning around. Draws a trip yep, or a knee it. or whatever. and It's a penalty. It's a penalty and a huge, huge power play with five and a half to go in the third. It's going to be a trip on Jake Garski. So Garski sticking out his leg. A dangerous play there. Yeah, sticking out that leg and knee-on-knee uh, on knee contact. So... Still will only be two minutes, 5.33 left. We're in the last TV timeout of this period. Okay, that's a good, that's a good sign, Zach. Do a little power play action. Jack Stanius, three goals this, uh, power play goals this year. Nolan Road with four. Blake Ackerley with two. Uh, the biggest power play of the season for White Bear Lake is about to begin. Now, do you think, say, a minute 10 in, you have a face-off in the offensive zone, your PP1 has been out there for, you know, the, you take that timeout? 19-208, the attendance. I have no idea. I mean, you... I, I don't know. I don't know. One goal deficit. Yeah. Great attendance numbers here, 19,000 plus, and I wish I could care more about that right now. <laughs> it's okay. We got five minutes. There's still a lot of time left. Power play for two of them, at least. Might Nolan Road, 33 goals, 24 assists on the year, held scoreless as the rest of the Bears have been this year, or this game. For. 45 minutes and 27 seconds. Can Grand Rapids hang on and pull the ultimate irony after the, a week after, less than a week after the Bears somehow hang on and shut out the Pioneers? Will it happen to them or can they figure out a way to capitalize on this power play? Face off to the left of Carter Casey. In the Grand Rapids zone, it'll be Nolan Road doing the honors for the Bears. And they will redo, redo the this faceoff. Face Put the second back on the clock. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> Draw one by White Bear Lake. To the point, Distad goes over for Road. Road back in the direction of Distad. He'll pick it up, slides it to his right, gets the puck back at the point. Now left circle. Here's Road back to Distad. Wines fires a shot that's blocked. Road gets the ricochet and slides it to the corner. Now in front, Eckerly. A shot goes right through the crease and wide of the goal. Eckerly stepping up now behind the goal. Puck comes free and the Thunderhawks clear to the blue line, but not out. Distad keeps it in, tiptoes along the line, backhands it to the left circle for Road. Now back to Distad, right circle. Chance for now for Stanius as he drops it back behind for Newlander. All the way around the wall now for Road. Road steps up now, pass in front, shot save, rebound in front, off the oh. crossbar! Back to the top of the circle. Distad has it. Bears so close, but they catch iron instead. Now it's Nolan Road. Road at the point. To his right. Chance across, but nobody there for the Bears. And it a self-clear for White Bear Lake. Halfway through the power play, they enter the zone once again. It's Road. Drop pass for Eckerly. Drop pass to Distad. Tiptoes along the line. Now right side for Road. Road changes positions with Distad. Left chance here. Back to the point for Distad. Now to Road at the left half wall. Back out high for Distad. Right circle here. Now right back to Distad. Now to Road. Road fires one. Hits the body. Goes to the corner. Eckerly and Newlander. Now Eckerly looking for the wraparound. Now in front. Still trying to jam at it, but the Thunderhawks survive, and they clear it down with 30 seconds to go in the power play. Long pass intercepted by Grand Rapids. Short-handed opportunity now right side. Moving in, but not much of an opportunity no. there. Obviously a very tired Nathan Garski. And now the Bears with 15 seconds to go in the power play. 3.45 to go in the game. Are working the puck down the ice, out of his net. 
is Casey. He'll quickly return as the Bears control on the far side. It's Newlander. He'll rim it all the way around to the left half ball for Road. Road goes back down low as the Thunderhawks are full strength. Newlander, left circle to the back door, just couldn't find Stanius. And now stepping up another shot from Selsky, that's turned away. And now in front again, nobody there for White Bear as cutting across and keeping it in briefly with Selsky, but he couldn't control. And now with 3.14 to go, the Thunderhawks content oh. with, and now, yeah, wow. They got it. Turning around at a perfect, perfectly, imperfectly time hit. Eckerly will go to the box. Grand Rapids will go to the power play with 3.09 to go in the third. That and was, the refs are going to meet on this too, Zach. Yeah, and this might be for the rest of. Yeah, as, this uh, might be five. A, another look at the crossbar hit so close. And uh, the player we, we couldn't see here initially. But the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks still on the ice here. And. It looks like that was Jake Garski just watching the replay on this. And Garski is still on the ice. They have not put the minute to, uh, count for the penalty yet. He's, oh, there it is. It's five. Five minutes. And that will pretty much do it. 3.09 left in the period. Eckerly not trying to do the uh, to check the player from behind, which we can now confirm. It is Jacob Garski as he will skate under his own power back to the bench. Looks from up here, at least to be a normal stride, so he'll work his way back. But uh, five minute major called, and it, he was just spinning around. Eckerly going for the hit, and it it is. It's a check from behind against the boards, too. Yeah. And head coach Chris Anderson getting an explanation from the two officials. And it looks like, uh, wow, the excitement all week long. Bears' best chance in years to finally break this curse and the Thunderhawks okay, phenomenal you, effort here so the Bears shorthanded for the next well, rest of regulation and beyond here's Rhodes shorthanded as he's driven into the wall as he carries it down the ice we'll see what head coach Chris Anderson oh, oh and then a yeah. hand then goes hold. up holding is the call and it'll be four on four okay well, now we hear the boo birds come out for Grand Rapids because they they were excited for a little bit of power play there, but I only got 14 seconds of it. But a clear hold, too. Yeah, uh, just all over them, tackled them basically, and now like Gavin Forrest. And now some hope for the Bears. <laughs> 2:55 left, four on four. The game has changed completely here. Yeah, and I think four on four favors again Nolan Road in this instance. Draw one by the Thunderhawks. They'll just skate it right out up the ice and into the White Bear Lake zone, but they were offside, and the puck goes into the stands as well. So how much time of power play will there be, Zach? Looks like uh, they're about 50 seconds or so. Yeah, so not only the Bears have to take advantage of the next 155 of this 4-4, four and four, try to find that equalizer because they're not going to want to do that well, down a goal. Um, they also then will have to kill off and you know, a long, long rest of that major if we even get to that point. So we'll see. Bears retreat to grab the puck in their zone. Thunderhawks putting on some great pressure here in the corner, trying to kill off those precious seconds. Miller pinned up against the wall. Stania steals it away as Distad to his left and can't find him. Down the ice, the puck goes. Icing waved off. Distad, big hit put on there as the puck comes free in the corner. Thunderhawks will look to break it out, but they can't get it past Road. Road sends it down low again, then the long pass takes a weird hop. Icing waved off. 1.14 to go in the four on four, 2.06 to go in the hockey game. Will Distad pass to his right? 
Up the ice comes Olsen. Olsen in the corner. Driving around the goal. Looking for options here. Still with it is Olsen. All the way around the zone. Now to the point. Olsen fires one that's blocked. It's out of the zone, too. Back to neutral ice it goes. Olsen racing after it here. 45 to go on the four on four before it goes back to a power play for the Bears. Here's Olsen. A drop pass shot. Score! Who else? Jack Stanius ties the game up with 94 seconds to go in the third. <laughs> oh, baby. We got one now. Jack Stanius, big hole Jack. He is back. Absolutely huge. Wow. He scored the game winner against Hill Murray in that shutout, and he avoids a shutout for the Bears. And now let's break this down here. 134 on the clock. 39 seconds left in the four on four, which will then carry over. There we go, white bear math, my goodness. 325 minus 39, Danny, help me out it's here. It's about, like, let's say 246, right? Right, of power play. What's the delay here for? Timeout, white bear like, and that's smart. Yeah, I, I can get behind that. So, 14, so. You need to settle down some emotions. Too. Same. Uh, two. 46 of power play time still will remain after that four on four is done. Yep. And so the Thunderhawks still will have a long, long power play after this is done. But what a shot from Jack Stanius. Just at the point, rips it past and. Yeah, a full two minute plus power play. It would carry into the overtime session. It would, and what a crazy <laughs> overtime that would be if we get there. But if you're White Bear at this point, it's you almost it, it almost might be worth gambling a bit here, being very aggressive in the yeah. next 39, no, doing 100. everything you can to get that go-ahead goal. Jack Stanius commanding the bench right now. That kid cooks. He does. <laughs> you gotta love that kid, man. He is. Let's go. He is a leader. He's almost. I would. I, I would be surprised if he doesn't get a letter on his jersey next year. Four on four for the next 39. Grand Rapids will have a power play after that. Minute 34 left in the in regulation. Like we said, four on four hockey favors the Bears. Draw one by White Bear Lake. Distad goes back to Selsky, who returns it to Distad, crosses his own blue line, gains the red line, and fires it deep. Goes all the way around for Stanius. Stanius rims it, rims it around near side now for Rode. Rode in the left circle, trying to cut his way through the slot area. Still has it. Nolan Rode moving in, trying to wrap around it. Trickled off his stick. He'll get it right back. Nolan Rode, top of the circle, fires a shot. That's blocked. Still with it is Rode now as he'll try a backhand pass. That's broken up. And then the Thunderhawks finally steer it clear of number nine for White Bear Lake as he makes his way to the bench after a hard earned shift. Five on four now for the rest of regulation. It's Luca roll off to the corner. He'll backhand it to nobody. Picked up by Selsky who can ice it and he will ice it. 45 seconds to go in regulation. Again, all will be shorthanded for White Bear Lake. It will carry over. This power play would carry over to overtime if we get there. Thunderhawks would like to not let that happen. Battle in the far corner now as the Puck enters the White Bear Lake zone. Grand Rapids controlling now with the man advantage. They'll play it in the corner. Stolen away by Distad. He'll go corner to corner with it. Olsen trying to clear. Does so. Got it for to Buto with 15 seconds left. Grand Rapids coming back in, however, with 10 seconds left. Nice poke check put on. Cleared out to neutral ice. Five seconds to go. Number five has it for the Thunderhawks. He'll send it in front. Score! 
Oh. A buzzer beater for the Thunderhawks. They score with less than a second left, and they will head to semifinal Friday. Oh, my word. Wow. With 0.2 seconds left on the clock right now. Nathan Garski, who took that hit. Or maybe that was his brother. Brother. So the brother. Wow. They've re-put 1.6 seconds on the clock. They've already adjusted it. It's a clean goal. And it just Garski getting it right in the slot, stick handles, and really stick handles Gabriel out of position, and the puck was on his stick and put it in. That was, a that was a really good goal. And, and there was moments in that last, I would say, 20 seconds where Grand Rapids didn't even. They looked like they were just playing, playing for, for overtime. overtime. Uh, Grand Rapids came defenseman. out of nowhere. And a heart-shattering loss for White Bear Lake will become official in 1.6 seconds. There's the horn. Ugh. Wow. That was a crazy ending. Final score, Grand Rapids in unbelievable fashion blows the one nothing lead with 134 in the game and then regains it with 1.6 seconds to beat White Bear Lake by a score of two to one. And the Bears have lost their 20th state quarterfinal game. That's unbelievable. I really thought we were having overtime. Rapids look content with that too. And the way that four on four was going, White Bear finally had momentum. <sighs> that has to be one of the more crazy state tournament finishes that I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Props to the Thunderhawks. And uh, maybe it is supernatural. Maybe it is yeah. paranormal. Sure as heck feels that way. Hill time cough there by myself. There's something. Ah, <sighs> uh, um, well, folks, uh, thank you for tuning in today. I'm, uh, I wish I could, uh, I know. That's the disappointing one, Zach. Congrats to Sheldon, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for the Thunderhawks, and, and good for them. But uh, that uh, that will uh, that will hurt for a while. So um, tomorrow, as we pencil in Grand Rapids. 
They will take on the Dino Hornets in the nightcap. Shanhass and Creighton Durham Hall at six. Both those games on the plus. Right here on the plus, I should say, as well. War Road and St. Cloud Cathedral kick things off at 11 a.m. on the plus in the Class A bracket, as well as Hermantown and Montemedi FM 96.7, and iHeartRadio is where you can find those games as well. So it was a great day of hockey, and um, as I try to take that... Uh, that one hurts. <laughs> As I try to take the orange, black, and white hat off, uh, what a what a day it was! It really was a was it a was. great day and a couple of, of thrillers. And um, we'll uh, man, they got sports psychologists for like athletes. Can we get one for fans? <laughs> Man, that was um, that was crazy. So congratulations again to the Thunderhawks. Congratulations to all the seniors and and uh, good luck to the Bears the rest of the way over um, at Minnesota's Hockey Cathedral as they like to uh, refer to it over there. So, um, uh, Danny, your, your final thoughts here as we um, as we say goodbye and <sighs> to uh, I, I'm I'm still in shock. That was that was an unreal ending to a. A crazy game. Um, the, the, from the five minute to the to the four on four to the power play. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Man, and it, I mean, it still would have been interesting to see that overtime with a 150 power play to start. What the Thunderhawks maybe could have done with that, but it doesn't matter. No, because. Uh, <sighs> Nathan Garski is a hero in Grand Rapids. The 218 move on. We'll have uh, Grand Rapids Edina tomorrow night. So, wow. So, sorry, folks, if uh, I wish I could be more. Uh, I'm trying to fake it. I can't. That that sucked. So, we'll just <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. I'm gonna get out of here, and uh, we'll we'll have the, uh, the the all the day. The we'll recover by tomorrow. I hope. But yes. Falmus will be on the call, thankfully. So with myself. <laughs> So, uh, Danny, thank you for a great, uh, great day of hockey. Four games, uh, just like that, it's done, and now we just have uh, what six more to go here. How much fun is that? Let's go. Can't, can't wait to get back to the rink. For Danny Ryan, I'm Zach Halverson. So long. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Hepner's Auto Body as well for their wonderful uh, support. Uh, Hepner's Auto Body and Glass presenting coverage of the tourney on the plus. Still two more days to go. We hope you'll join us then. Have a great uh, rest of your evening. Uh, and uh, go Bears, man. Go Bears.